I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. And for those listening, you just missed 14 minutes of logistic talk. And was it really? Like, four- it was 14 minutes because we started at 1030. And then oh we just talked about logistics and uh, anxiety about how are we going to keep getting stuff out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got a plan. We got a plan. Oh, no there is a plan. Yet, but there's a plan. Oh, there is. Um, so we're recording this a week late. And I wanted to, to talk about why we're recording this a week late. <laughs> So, um, last week when we're recording, so actually last week when we're releasing, probably, um, I went to a concert. Oh yeah. And I'm an old man. (laughs) If you follow him on Instagram, you've seen some pretty dope pictures. Uh, I know that you texted me the Sunday after. No, the Saturday, because that was a Friday. And yes. uh, you're just like, heads up, I can't talk right now. I'm old, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, um, I can actually pull up the exact text because, uh, let's see. Uh, heads up, if you want to record, my voice is shredded, my hearing is gone, and my research schedule got forked this week. So I can't host an episode for sure. That's very fair. <laughs> So, yeah, um, long story short, I went in, in the, on the hottest day of the year. So it was far. so bad. I've got a story to tell you about your story after you finish with your story. But it was yeah. so hot. It was like 104 and humid. Yeah. So I was in Uptown Kingston. And What you doing in my territory? Well, uh, hey, hey, hey. It's more your territory because you live like right there. <laughs> yeah. But it's also my territory. <laughs> Kingston's, Kingston is definitely my territory, too. Uh-huh. Uh, so I was in Uptown Kingston, and I made a – let's say uh, I misinterpreted Uh-oh. The, where the show was supposed to be. So I got some lunch. I got some dinner. It was BSP. Yeah, it was BSP. However, it was the back room of BSP. Now, the front room of BSP has AC. The back room oh. of BSP is a warehouse. Yeah. I forgot and about that. It was warm. I believe it, man. Yeah, I'll sweat I, in the front room of BSP. Yeah. And the I, AC I had, is good. It is really good. And you know why I know it's really good? Because I was walking in the back room of BSP, and someone opened the front a door to the front room, and it was like walking into a freezer. <laughs> like, yeah. oh my god! But uh, I will say this: BSP uh-huh. reasonably priced drinks. Oh yes, yeah. Totally. Uh, Cannot the, complain. Uh, yeah, I literally I I got two water bottles while I was there. Was not disappointed yeah at all the The, uh um, it's good that and i don't go there frequently um i go there like significantly more than i used to because my used to was was a sample size of zero but mm -hmm. um when i do it's i usually go with people who sort of like go there a lot or know the owner and it's like the the drinks are reasonably priced the owner is that if you saw a really young white guy behind the counter who like i think i'm older than him I forget his name already. He's the owner, and he's super nice. And, like, (laughs) if you're just, like, hanging out, like, I went to see, I saw a punk band there Sunday, and they had, like, a school of rock type of thing going on. So I was just hanging out, and he was just like, hey, these drinks are on me. And I was like, hey, thank you, man. (laughs) It's pretty chill. It's it's a a cool place. (laughs) No, I actually, I actually really enjoyed it. And the venue's dope. Like, back room is kind of wild, because it's got, like, 
uh, TWRP made a joke about it being prom. Yeah. Because it literally does look like a prom. Like, they got streamers hanging from the ceiling. They got lights on the walls. There's a weird, like, uh, Victorian-era sweet shop at the back of it yeah. that they sell all their, their booze out of. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a much better venue than any of the event- other venues I've been to in uh, upstate New York. Yeah, for no sure. it's a good place. Uh, and there's a lot of floor <clears throat> space as well. So. There's a lot of floor sp- space. There's a reasonable amount of bathrooms, given the number of people that are usually in there. Yeah, well, actually, I and will say this. clean enough for a music venue, right? Compared to places where they play well, music. Let me say, compared to the chance, that place was, like, upscale. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've been in the chance bathroom, and that yeah. bathroom is a nightmare. Also, the... Now we're roasting on the chance. <laughs> I'm not going to roast on the chance anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the show was, I think, the Proto Met. No, not, not, I think. It was the Proto Met and TWRP. Yeah. TWRP opened. Um, if anyone listening to this can get a chance to see TWRP and the Proto Men live on their tour, I highly recommend it because it was a phenomenal show. Oh, I believe it. I saw pictures. I wanted to. <clears throat> So at the well, same time you were doing this, I was in Beacon, and if we got yep. out, like, if we got, basically, if we m- didn't miss the train, we would have, like, caught the last half. <laughs> you took the train? Yeah. To Beacon? Yeah, c- for parking purposes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we, yeah. we got on I guess... the train from uh, Poughkeepsie to Beacon, hopped okay, off the I train. I can actually see that. And we're like... Well, Main Street's right there. We can just walk. We don't have to Uber. Yeah. And then halfway well, up the hill on Main Street, when it's 104, and just everybody's covered in sweat and decided we should have, uh, we're like, we should have gotten, let's just get an Uber. It's like, there's no service. So then we just stopped in bars for water and sweat napkins. <laughs> oh my God. And like, some of the service is real bad. So we just like, legit just left. We're like, all right, fine. Bye. And then. Wow. No, it was bad. But then we got sushi, which was Okay. okay. Sushi in 104 degree weather. Well, listen, sushi was part way down to another spot, to a different bar I wanted to go to, but sushi had air conditioning and uh, bar food didn't feel like that's usually heavy and sushi's light. And when it's hot, you can't, you don't want like heavy food. That's true. It's yeah. just traditionally fish is not the uh, food of choice when it comes to hot weather for. For logistical reasons. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> just just logistics. That's, yeah. that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. And then uh, ended up going to a place. A cool, it was a cool pl- like spot. It, it felt like it, it belonged in Uptown. It's called like Draft Industries or something where they had all like fancy stuff, but it wasn't mm-hmm. like hoity-toity. It was nice there. Mm-hmm. It was just talking to people there. Oh, that's it was pretty nice. neat. It was. Yeah, yeah. Had a $200 bar tab. But, boy, oh boy. Yeah. Although I, I can't really complain much because I had a $160 uh, merch, merch tab. tab. I forgot about that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So I bought two t shirts. Yeah. And I bought the limited edition screen print poster for the venue. Yeah. Because I was like, well, I'm buying that poster. Yeah. Because um, they also didn't have a shirt for the tour. Uh-huh. And then I bought pins. I saw those pins. They're pretty good pins. Yeah. So I regret my my wallet regrets it, but John does it. Fair. So. That's a good spot to be in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh man. Okay. So then at this point, uh, it's probably fair to say, welcome to Cryptopedia. An exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, uh, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And my voice and is I- going through transformations because I just woke up, so I'm going, it's turning into normal voice as I speak from tired voice. I'm sorry, I just I can, cut you off. I can hear it. Nah, it's fine. I was going to say that Jira is the creature that lives under my bed and wakes me up every morning at 6.30. That's fair. My cat hate... flopped, did like a tummy flop onto my face when I was asleep, and that was scary. Yeah, that's that's your cat trying to kill you. Yeah, it is. Just, 
Just to warn you, that's like uh, that was a that, that was an assassination attempt. Oh, it was. I also learned that I sleep way better if I you have, I have like anti snoring stuff now. I sleep mm -hmm. I for given if I sleep the same period of time and I got that stuff, it's mm -hmm. like I feel so much more well rested. Because <laughs> it turns I, I, out that uh, breathing is important. Yeah, I've been thinking that I need to get a sleep study done. Uh, but every time I go to the doctor and say that I need a sleep study, they like they there's some other problem they latch on to, and it's like. I get it. I have a lot of problems. <laughs> I just want to deal with this one. Yeah. I don't like it looks they look goofy, but I guess got stuff on Amazon there. You're like, you shove it up your face. But uh, it keeps all them them inside flaps from shutting on you. And uh, it works them, pr pretty them, decent. Them inside flaps. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm a medical professional. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. So this week's creature was first seen starting around the 19th century. Okay. It's humanoid in appearance. It mm -hmm. hangs out in Australia, and it's still seen today. Uh, The Crocodile Dundee. The Crocodile Dundee. No, 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 it is not. Today, we're going to be talking about Yowies. Oh, how yeah. about that? I honestly wasn't anticipating that. There, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to uh, move this into the... I'm an old man. Everybody knows I'm an old man. People start calling me old man. Uh, boop, 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 boop. <sighs> now I'm moving stuff. I used to know how computers worked. I mean, I, st and I still know shared. how to computer work, computers work because it's my job. Yeah. Well, I was just like, how do I move this folder? Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. <coughs> And just as a heads up, I wrote this, um, let's say five or six weeks ago, and I'm pretty sure I didn't put it in any particular order. Yeah, well, that's all good. It's been long enough where I'm going to be learning about Yowies too. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like one of our most popular episodes was in reverse order, so. Oh, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the Yowie is usually described as a hairy and ape-like creature standing upright and between 2.1 meters, which is about 6 feet 11 inches tall, and 3.6 meters, about 12 feet tall. The Yowie's feet are described as much larger than a human's, on account of how tall it is. But allegedly, but, yeah. the Yowie uh, tracks are inconsistent in shape and toe number, and the descriptions mm. of Yowie feet and footprints provided by Yowie witnesses are even more varied than those of Bigfoot. The Yowie's nose <clears throat> is described as wide and flat, Behaviorally, some report that the Yaoi is timid or shy, and others describe them as violent or aggressive. So just like the Bigfoot, it's probably a local animal. It's all over the map, yeah. Yeah, because... Just a what crazy is it? Western, wide... Yeah. Western Bigfoot are chiller, and Eastern Bigfoot are more aggressive, I think was the whole thing. But yeah. if you look at the types of bears that live in each region, the bears on the East Coast are generally chiller than the bears on the west coast okay because uh, they all from theory. boston they're like hey i'm walking here uh <clears throat> brandon give me some of that cheese steak that was yo that i was... like baseball you brandon sports there was three different cities you just encapsulated right there you realize that right yeah boston boston uh -huh. philly in New York City. Nah, Boston. Okay. Hey, I'm Walking Here is from a movie that took place in New York City because a cab literally almost killed the actor. <laughs> uh, and cheesesteak is pretty much definitively associated with uh, with Philly. Philly, yeah. So, I hey, mean, I'm Walking Here. Beans, if you went if you went baked beans, I would believe you even more. Yeah. So for me, hey, I'm walking here, is explicitly yeah. from the Simpsons Hit and Run video game on the Xbox. Well, that's not what it's from. For I me, that's that. what it's from. I did not. Well, I did not realize that. You didn't? No. For me, that was the one guy says every time you almost hit him in the Simpsons. Uh, it's from Midnight Cowboy, 1969. Yeah, I've never seen or heard that. <laughs> I've never seen it, but that doesn't mean that I heard. Of, I haven't heard of it. I've never heard of it. Here we go. Here's the scene. <laughs> oh, no. 
Oh, good. All right, what do we got going on? Yeah. I think it... <laughs> Thanks for giving me stuff I have to edit. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. advertisements are so loud. Uh, yeah, Ow, my are. ears. Oh, man. Oh, God. I, I oh. felt like it was... Oh, no, the ad's so long. I felt like it was important that you know this, though, because... There's I, this... I, I can't have you go around saying... Hey, I'm walking here and not yeah. know the connection. There's this old guy in Uptown, and my, he's he's 83, and he wears an all white suit and walks just like that guy. Does he? Yeah, like he's way less aggressive than that guy. But his whole thing is he like tries to dance with everybody. It's very funny. He can get low too. He's still he's very spry. He's a very spry older gentleman. So, um, fun fact. Yes. Uh, this movie. Yeah. Was, uh, X-rated. What? Well, X-rated for 1969. Uh. Like, what they have in it? I'm looking it up. Because I've never seen the movie. Um... 1969. So it can't have been that bad because Behind the Green Door didn't come out till 1972. I think. Oh, you know what it is? There was there was homosexuality in it. Oh yeah, that's that's what did it because they're yeah weird about yeah, it stuff. Yeah, was 69. Then. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. That that's 15 movies with the most nudity. YouTube video came up when I searched. Why it was rated X rated. Oh, okay. Google behind the green door. That's got a fun story about it. Actually, don't. Don't. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> I'm just watching your face. So, according to the Kuku Yolanji tribe of northern Queensland, they had existed alongside the Yowie for hundreds of years until they mysteriously vanished. The most common theory is that the Yowie tribe moved deeper into the outback to escape the people moving into the country. The Kuku Yolanji uh, records uh, have also detailed recordings uh, telling us of attacks by the Yowie people. Mm -hmm. Yowie hunter Dean Harrison, yes. So, okay. Uh, I don't think we've covered this directly on Critipedia yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, mm -hmm. the Sasquatch was actually a descriptor for a Native American tribe originally. Oh, okay. So, like, if you would talk to people from the the region, yeah. they'd describe them as a tribe of people mm -hmm. that were just kind of hairier and wore his suit. Uh, hair suit? Hair suit. Okay. That's the word I was like. I mean, for. that could describe my neighbor. Uh, that could describe several people I'm friends with. Um, <laughs> That's true. So, just just going to point out that little little parallel right there. Yeah. Okay. So, Yowie hunter Dean Harrison has reportedly studied the creatures for years. He theorized that the Yowie people function in a society and within family units such as humans, and this would also align with the records of the Kuku Yolanji people. Mm -hmm. This has also led him to believe that they have similar ways of dealing with their dead, such as burying or burning, explaining why bodies are not found. Except we can... We still totally find bodies of... Buried people? Like, all of the people. time. All yeah. of the time, yeah. Like, it, it's a super common thing. Like, yeah, archaeology exists. Yeah. I just... <laughs> You're just throwing that out there? Yeah. <laughs> just, it's, it's an extent, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh-huh. And, like, we find, I think... Haven't we found uh, elephant burial grounds, too? Elephant graveyards, too? Yeah. Yes, we have. So one man tells of his close encounter with the Yowie in the outback. The man was living at a sawmill uh, settlement deep in the forest. His home consisted of a two-bedroom hut, and he slept in one room and his two boys in the other room. One night, the man was awoken by a blinding pain in his chest, and the pain was from a Yowie pounding its fists into the man's body. So he just got woked it up the worst way possible. Yeah, that's that's not great. Um, I also want to correct myself. Apparently, elephant graveyards are mythical places. Oh, you know what? Because I think I said yes, because there isn't that in The Lion King. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, too. Yeah, okay. Well, at least we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
was like, oh yeah, this is the Lion King. It's got to be real. It's a thing. Yeah, I, I mean, they got laughing hyenas. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Although, talking that's lions. A funny story about that. Uh, yeah. There was like a hyena defamation league thing that came about because of that movie. Oh man. Because the hyenas were defamed or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It was. It was a thing. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So the man grabbed the arm of the beast to stop the assault, and the next few minutes effectively resulted in the man wrestling the the, the yaoi for his life. And uh, throughout the scuffle, the man was able to collect a, a great detail of the creature. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let me stop you for a second there. Yeah. Um, I have never been in a situation where I was wrestling with something where I knew I could legitimately tell you the correct any correct details about the thing i was wrestling with. that's not what you're thinking about at the time like your mind is not like let me remember this yeah like i remember like for example one time i was watching godzilla the the 2014 version yeah and uh my cat saw another cat outside and started and so i put myself in between them Next thing I know, I'm in the tub with scratches on my legs <laughs> uh, because I had, I was bleeding so bad and I wanted to get like Epsom salt to like uh-huh. whatever. And because you want to clean cat cuts out as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, I don't remember any other details. There's that is fair. Yeah. So just just wanted to wanted to point that out. Yeah. You do got to watch the kitty cat stuff real quick because I get scratched. Not frequently, but when I do, I get real scratched real good, and that's like a hundred percent of the time gets infected. Yeah, <laughs> even when you wash it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The creature's face was a dark copper with no hair. Bloat's mm-hmm. eyes were two deep creases, and its nose was broad and flat. The face structure was something between man and ape, and the fur on the body was straight, greasy, and a dark gray color. The neck was short and thick, and its chest and shoulders were twice as deep as a man. And by deep, I assume thickness. He's saying okay, they went, okay. they were there twice yeah, yeah, as yeah. thick. Yeah. Who was a stocky man on his own. Its arms were short, but massive in muscle, and the legs were well built and comparable to a fit man. So Yeti gets gains. He works out. Or sorry, yeah, Yowie. Yeah. Yowie's got gains. Oh, yeah. Um, so far, it sounds like he may. Wait, did they mention anything about his legs? Well built. Okay, so he doesn't skip leg day either. Yeah, it does not skip leg day. He's He's got an all, he's got a total body. Fitness thing. Oh, yeah. When he walks through the outback, it's just lunges. Just lunges the whole time. That would explain why the the footprints are so inconsistent. Oh, yes. Well, actually, no, that wouldn't. Because his form would be off then. They should be consistent. Yeah. Although I am imagining a a Sasquatch doing lunges, and it's giving me... It's making me very happy. (laughs) As it should. (laughs) Like... Imagine how much better the Patterson video would have been if the Sasquatch <laughs> was just did doing lunges, lunges across the screen. Like, <laughs> it just like starts doing like burpees and then gets up and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> but it does those like um, it does those high kick runs. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know the ones that like are supposed yeah. to get you really going. Yeah, because it's he's just like you know what, every moment, every moment can be gains. Every moment. I just got new running shoes. Did you? Yeah. Well, I don't run. I walk. But I'm going to upgrade it to jogging. But I decided okay. I hate my current shoes because um, they're bad. But I was out. I did like a mile and a half the other day. I was around the neighborhood. And I felt so. This individual, I would have felt bad if it wasn't so funny. Because I'm just sort of walking and being thinking I should get new shoes. And I did. Mm. They're Nikes. They have the word running on them. So I knew they were right. Um, mm-hmm. Someone just runs past me. But runs where I, like, look over my shoulder because, like, he's being chased. But then it's like, oh, no, he's in, like, the I run a lot shirt and pants. Oh, uh, yeah. So so I'm walking, but it's sort of like watching, like, you know that scene from Scooby-Doo where there's all those doors and stuff like that? Where yes. I'd be walking down basically the main street past the armory, and there's all those side streets. So <laughs> I'd be walking. Like, he just runs past me. I go around the corner. And I see him go around the car. I'm like, where'd he go? And then he just comes crossways from a side street, like runs across my path. So <laughs> I'm just walking straight. And this guy's always like one street ahead of me, but zipping perpendicular back and forth like a freaking madman. It's and ridiculous. Then, uh, a Scooby-Doo song starts yeah. playing like a love, love, love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? I was like, this guy's getting it. 
And then some kids did like the little hold their thumbs up and, uh, uh, to like make fun of me a little bit thing because their dad was giving a ride. Like they were in like a wagon getting a ride around the block and they're like, yeah, hey, you're walking. And it was like, hey, that's mean. <laughs> <laughs> He was in good shape too. He was like fifty, if I had to guess, maybe. Like he was, he had tat the tattoos and the build that said like he got out of the service but never dropped the routine he used to have. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he had that kind of thing going on. That's a uh, super rare. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, yeah. That that's like extremely rare from my experience. Oh yeah, no, I hang out with a lot of people who who, who are active duty and. They they are no longer the kind of people that like do that. I know a few who still like roll up their clothes the same way, but like I don't like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No one, no one's, no one's running around and working out like that anymore. Ah, oh, jeez. So the man pushed the monster back out of his room. Just no segues. I'm not in a segue no. kind of mood. The no, man... there's no need. No. Uh, but it got a hold of his leg. The beast then attempted to pull him through the back door. He fought the creature off and watched as it scurried into the shadows of the night. Nothing that ran more like a human or an animal. So it was doing burpees and it was doing burpees and yeah. high kicks. Oh, the highest kicks. Yeah. The highest kicks. Straight into a bucket of, uh, uh, uh muscle milk. Mm. Mm -hmm. He also has some fight milk. Muscle milk? tastes so good like i love it it tastes so good but i don't really like i i don't go to the gym anymore like i do i have my like yeah. a little routine where i just try to like not get fatter yep yep but i so i can't drink muscle milk but i'll go for like walks or do my little sit up push up a thing or whatever but i'm just trying to like maintain i'm mm -hmm. <laughs> well you see if you want to cut <clears throat> i used to milk. drink muscle milk for good are you th that's always funny right yeah okay you know, you know what the key to, to fight milk is. What's the key to fight milk? Crow's eggs. Crow's. Oh yes. Okay. Shit's coming back to me now. Yeah. Okay. You need some crow's eggs. This is a slow waking up morning. My brain, like, I'm still not connecting dots. My cat knocked something over. I'm not even worried about it. Wow. That's a morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a mood. Oh yeah. The origin of the name Yowie to describe unidentified hominids. From Australia is unclear. Some 19th century writers suggested that it arose through Aboriginal legends. Robert Holden recounts several stories that support this from the 19th century, including this European account from 1842. Also, there's a lot of ellipses. Um, so just as a heads up. And uh, yeah, ellipses is the dot dot dot. If anyone's ever curious, it's what an ellipses is. The natives of Australia believe in the Yahoo. This being they describe, it's also written very weird. This being they yeah. describe as resembling a man of nearly the same height with long white hair hanging down from its head over the features. The arms as extraordinary long furnished at the extremities with great talons and the feet turned backwards so that on flying from man, the imprint of the foot appears as if they had been traveled in the opposite direction. Altogether, they describe it as a hideous monster of unearthly character and ape-like appearance. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. So. A very different description from, from what we're used to uh, today. I'd say 100% dis different description. Also, Yahoo. Uh-huh. Not close to Yowie. No. Well, it, it, language not evolves and no. such. No, 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 no. No? Okay. I, I'm not gonna... I, I, I feel like this is one of those things where they fit into an etymol they fit into a uh, mythological bucket. Okay. And somebody decided to make these this. Yeah. Not the other way around. Okay. Where it was like because because the fact that it has the the backwards feet is pretty important. Yeah. Also, uh, talons. Talons are also very important. Too. I like the ta I include it because I like the talons and I like it has the backwards large talons. feet so much. Yes. It has large talons. It's, I that's... said that to someone the other day, and they did not get it. And I was like, "Man, what the? What are you doing with your life?" Well, how old were they? My age. Oh, well, now that's a problem. Yeah. Oh yeah. If, if if they weren't if they weren't our age, that would be fine. But if they were our age, then that was like a big deal. Yeah, it like was a, a big deal. deal. Like a huge. Then again, it might have just been our 
our high school, but it was probably also school, only our high school. Middle school, maybe. Yeah. That was middle school. That was middle yeah. school. Another story about the name collected from an Aboriginal source suggests that the creature is part of the dream time. Oh wait, wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull something I learned from the doll really quick. Oh yes. Uh so anyone who any any Aborigine people who are out there listening, because we do have mm. Australia people, this story does mention uh names. Yeah. Names of deceased Aborigines. Yes. So Yes, yes, yes. A, I should have included just, that. I should have thought about that. Yeah, just a really quick disclaimer, because I don't yeah. think we've mentioned any names yet, but I Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from here on out, there are going to be names of deceased Aborigines. Yes. Good call on that. I, I caught it at the last second. So. You caught it at the exact perfect time. Mm-hmm. And um, also, apologies for enunciation, because uh, I haven't I didn't do a pre-read on this one. <laughs> That's fair. Old Bungaree, <clears throat> a Gunnedah Aboriginal, said that at one time there were tribes of them, Yahoos. Again, I think Yahoo and, and, and Yaoi are... are, are interchangeable to some extent okay um, i mean I, I feel i still feel like it's one of those things where it happened after the fact not not during the fact so okay whatever uh I, i'm not convinced though you're not convinced yet okay the um uh at one time there were tribes of them the yahoos and that they were the original inhabitants of the country he said that they were a race of old blacks, the Yahoos, and the blacks used to fight and the blacks always beat them, but the Yahoos always made away from the blacks being faster and running mostly. Okay, wait. Mm. I'm I'm confused now. I'm a little bit confused, and this is now I'm now. So that's I'm out of context, confused. so I can't tell if he's talking about that as a name of like a tribal name or as like a race. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Okay. <laughs> I, I just remembered something from Scooby Doo. Uh huh. There's you're just including stuff. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. On the other hand, John, Jonas, John, John, it's literally your name, and I can't say it. Good work. And also, that's not your name. On the other hand, Jonathan Swift's Yahoo's from Gulliver true. Travels. And European uh, traditions of Wild Harry Man are also cited as a possible source. So they're actually including Gulliver's Travels. I think Gulliver's Travels might might be more be, likely. Might be more likely the source because they of... do align more closely with what the uh, typical idea of a Yaoi is. Yeah, I, I still I'm thinking now that you've mentioned that I'm thinking that the evolution of the term mm-hmm. originated from. A misinterpretation of Jonathan Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Gulliver's Travels. Travels. Yeah, I think it was one of those things where it entered the cultural like zeitgeist. Yeah, the cultural zeitgeist, and after that, it it got morphed. Yeah, that happens, and that's a cool thing. It it was was a more clear way to figure out how things happen because it's really cool seeing how things transform over time. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I super think that in this particular case, that that is what happened. I mean, I have no proof of that. Yeah. But I think that's what happened. Okay. So. In a column in the Sydney Morning Herald in 1987, columnist Margaret Jones wrote that the first Australian Yowie sighting was said to have taken place in 1795. The article had a, here we go again with this shit tone to it, uh, with the title, uh, called... It's spot the yowie time again. Wow, that's um like thrown shade in the title. Yeah, that's like I, I was assigned to write this article. I don't want to write this article. Yeah, like a hundred percent. Uh, in eighteen seventy six, amateur. So I'm not. I'm not even including the article. Like that, the whole it, there is full of snark. But uh, of course, it was full of snark. There's yeah. I'm not surprised that it was full. It of was snark. like. Someone saw the Yowie again. The first one was supposedly popped up around this time. Like, it was very much like that. Um, I think I linked to it, if anyone's interested in the, if you have uh, the show notes. Um, In 1876, amateur naturalist Henry James McCooey claimed to have seen an indigenous ape of the south coast of New South Wales uh, between Batemans Bay and Ulladula. I... I don't know if it's... Uladula? I don't know if it's Uladula. 
because Australia has like really really wild pronunciations. It does. I'm also super white. Well, Brandon. What? <laughs> you say that like Australia isn't super white. Oh no, it is. I'm just saying for pronunciation, expect that version. Like expect. Right. I'll try. I try my best. Is all I can say. Is that I try right. my best. All right, Uladula. Let's go for it. Uladula. Well, now now you've got me a little bit paranoid. So I'm gonna do Uladula pronunciation. All right. What do we have? What do we got? 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 It's loading so slow. It's that YouTube. Here's how to pronounce Uladula. I was wrong. It's Aladulla. Gulla Gulla? Aladulla. Gulla Gulla. <laughs> I see what you're doing. Uh, so anyway, he writes that a few a few days ago, I saw one of these strange creatures on the coast between Bateman's Bay and Aladulla. I should think that if it were standing perfectly upright, it would have been nearly five feet high. It was tailless and covered with very long black hair, which uh, which was dirty red or snuff color and about the throat of the beast. Its eyes, uh, which were small and restless, uh, were partially hidden by matted hair that covered its head. I threw a stone at the animal, one, not cool, uh, mm -hmm. whereupon it immediately rushed off. Okay, so really, 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 really quick. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound like a yaoi. No, it sounds like he was just mean. Yeah, to a guy. it sounds like uh, yeah, it sounds like he was mean to a guy because, uh, haven't hasn't already been like stated that they were like at the very least the Aborigines version was it had white fur, it had long white hair and talons yeah, and backwards feet, and it's usually six to thirteen feet tall. Six to twelve, well five eleven to twelve. Yeah, so this is a uh, he was mean to this, a person. Yeah, I think he was mean to a short guy. Mm -hmm. I, I think we have to get uh, Henry, Z Henry Zabrowski in on this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was Henry Zabrowski. <laughs> he said, I'm Detective Popcorn and ran into the woods. So Rex Gilroy <laughs> wrote in an article on the 7th of August in 1980 of why yaois are fair dinkum. <clears throat> uh... I also want to point out. I didn't even include. I should. This is something I would have. I should have said it, but I remember this website. This is a black background green text website. Are you serious? Yeah, I was so excited when I found it. Oh, I, was I hate so them excited. so much though. I oh no, I couldn't stand it, but I got real oh, excited when I God. ran into it. So I found it. It's uh, it's blue background, uh, yellow text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the. This physically hurts my eyes to even, not even me, just to have on my screen. Like, I'm not even joking. Because, like, yeah. it, it's on the screen, and it's just, like, blurring together and, oh, like, yeah. moving around and stuff like that. Um, also, I'm pretty sure the font at the top of this is, like, a Comic Sans. Yeah. It's Comic Sans MS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the beautiful. The font for the, the titles are it's Comic It's a thing Sans. of beauty. The bulk of the, my next episode is from an internet web forum that had you, you had to access that was the text was taken from Wayback Machine and saved into Google. Good lord! So it was it was it was a it was a whole thing. It, it's going to be something. It's very different from most of my other episodes, but it was oh man! And I just wrote that last night. Oh god! Yeah. So anyway, he writes, it was a sunner, sunny afternoon that August 7th, 1970, as I was making my way through the dense forest in the rugged Jameson Valley of South Katoomba, deep in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales. The time was 3.30 p.m., when, as I was moving across the densely wooded gully near the ruined Castle Rock Formation, my attention was drawn by the sound of breaking foliage 40 yards away to my right. And I would like to take a moment and congratulate myself. I read all of that. Without a stutter or mispronunciation. Very smooth. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Golf clap. Golf, Golf clap. claps. <laughs> Golf clap. Golf clap. Like, halfway through, I was like, I'm reading so well right now. I'm reading so well right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brandon. Brandon, this is the most important moment of your life. Yes? Read the next paragraph. I will. Hey, I was in special reading classes, man. 
I know, I know. <laughs> it's like, I'm reading so well. <laughs> <laughs> there, moving upon two legs into the dense forest, I saw a creature, which up till then I had never seen in all my years of exploring the Australian bush. Although the beast was gone in the undergrowth within seconds, the scene is deeply etched into my mind to this day. Although I never caught sight of one of these creatures face it was moving away from me it was about five to six feet tall in height covered in long dark hair and moved upright upon two legs with a stooped gait i had just caught sight of the yaoi you did it again there was a stutter but there was uh, a stutter but yeah. it's because they used really they use a non like improper english yeah well there's a hyphen he said i never caught caught sight of the creature's face hyphen it or should have been face, uh, comma, space, it was moving away from me. Yeah, I don't know why any... that That's some grammar, but then again, this is a green text site. Yeah. So, grammar <laughs> is not... Grammar's a luxury on those sites. Yeah, that's fair. And this is, I'll say, better than most. I it did is, some heavy is. redacting and fixing, again, of next week's fucking... They still called the internet the net. Good lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, man. I just want to know what next week's episode is now because that's just. Uh, well, not next week's, but the next episode I rec- we record from you. Yeah. Because I, I know what next week's episode is. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> well, males are often strong, muscular beasts with long, thick hair, the females are slenderer have less hair and long, pendulous breasts. Okay. The okay. are her. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how? How does he know that? He's a Yowie researcher. Also. Also. Yes. Uh, long, pendulous breasts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I just. <laughs> There's not not even that it's like a thing that you need to be attracted to a yaoi. But but that particular phrase yeah is just gross to me on it so is. many levels that I can't even begin to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> it's like moist. Ah. Uh, moist talons. Moist t- Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Because it's like, it's not even wet talons. It's moist talons. Yeah. So, and you know what the worst part is? Like, for me, moist is not that bad of a word. But for some Uh people, like, I knew one person who, if you said moist around them, they, like, freaked out on you because they hated the word so much. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it, what is it, like, frisian or whatever? Like, it's like the opposite of frisian. Like vocal frisian. Vocal fri I don't even know what frisian is. Um, I think it's like a, a sensation of like Yeah, sensation of excitement. It's like that Oh, I got you. Like goosebumps. Yeah. It, it was like the opposite of frisian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like uh like a mesophonia but for words. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Uh the Yowies are herbivore herb. <laughs> Eat plants type kind of animals mm-hmm. inhabiting the remoter forest covered mountain ranges in eastern Australia in areas so remote that man has seldom been able to penetrate. You always appear very timid and shy creatures, preferring to keep clear of man, migrating about the remoter regions, uh, the remoter mountainous regions in small family groups, foraging for food, sleeping either in open forest or in caves. During 1969, a group of loggers working above the dense forest country 4,000 feet above sea level in the Kuranda district uh, west of Cairns witnessed a rare sight. Yeah? He's he's making a lot of... He's speaking very bluntly of things that I doubt he has evidence for. Yeah, like, I'm feeling like this dude is... um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, lying. Yeah. <laughs> it's a possibility. Because, like, this is, this is like, Tolkien-level shit where you're yeah. world-building, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, yeah. It's like, and their language is, uh, uh, they've got the language of Elvish. 
Yeah. Um, also, some no Russian. Yes. 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 Because they're bears. Because they're bears. And by definition, bears no Russian. All, All bears. bears. All bears All no bears. Russian. All of them. Black bears, grizzly bears, polar bears. Mm-hmm. Um, koala bears. Uh-huh. But they're, they're so Bug dumb. Bears. Huh? Bug, Bug bears. Huh? Bug bears. Yep, yep, yep. Water yep. bears. Uh, drop bears. Drop bears. Uh, That's another one got... I looked at doing, and there's not that much on. No, I, I could have told you that there was not much on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah. bears. Yeah. Bears no Russian. Bears no Russian. The time was about 4 p.m. As we sat quietly chatting, we were attacked, or sorry, attracted by the sounds of breaking foliage some distance away down the gully slope. As we watched from uh, the cover of foliage, foliage, we saw what we thought to be a man-sized male creature, then another, about six or seven feet tall, and then a five-foot-tall female and a small child emerged from the forest. The creatures appeared ape-like, hairy, and dark-colored. He added that the beasts appeared to be searching around the ground, uh, perhaps for roots or other plants as they moved across the slope, disappearing into the surrounding forest. So, I just want to point out that yeah. man-sized male... I, like, I get what it is, like, they're trying to say it's, like, human-sized. Yeah. But man-sized male sounds so, like, incorrect. Like, yeah. it took every part of my, my being to not say, oh, that's that's a dumb thing oh, to say. Oh, if this was high school English class, the like, we would have been like, you should choose, word it differently. Yeah, there would have been there would have been some red ink on that. Oh, yeah, not, 100%. I'm gonna, gonna li- not going to lie. There would, yeah. that, that's a red ink. That's a red inker. 100%. Or... Or a, a green inker if the person doesn't believe in using red ink. Yeah. Australian historian Graham Joyner maintains that the Yowie has never existed. He points out that it was unknown before 1975 and that it originated in a misunderstanding. Hey. <clears throat> hey. I'm walking over here. Don't hit me, Homer Simpson. Uh, that could have happened if you were driving. Don't have a cow, man. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah. El Barto, um, uh-huh. do the Bart man. Oh, so I'm sure I showed you this video probably years ago, but there's that um, uh, band Oakley Doakley where they're all Ned Flanders themed metal yes. bands. The Simpsons had an episode where they played their music video for the credits. What? Yeah, I think it was White Wine Spritzer that they played at the end credits of one of the Simpsons recent, like this year, and I was so happy for Oakley Doakley. Because I just like weird themed bands and Max oh, Sabbath. Oh another, my God! Yeah. It did have. It was White Wine Spritzer. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I was jazzed for them for real. That's. Uh, yeah, it was pretty great. We we saw the video and knew they had to be on the show. Longtime Simpsons showrunner Al Jean tells Rolling Stones, <laughs> "We do not endorse their message of an indiscriminate drinking of white wine spritzers." <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I had a white wine spritzer three weeks ago. Is it just white wine with carbonation in it? Yeah, it's just bubblies. Okay, just bubbly white wine. I may have one more in my refrigerator. I don't, I don't recall. I'm. So I wanna I wanna say something that's yeah. gonna be probably the weirdest thing anyone's ever said. Yeah. I had a Lacroix. And they're good. Which one? Oh well, I had an apricot Lacroix. The grapefruit's where it's at. I gotta tell you something. I hate Lacroix. I'm gonna drive to your house and punch you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> fine. I don't care. Was that because... your only? Was that the only one you ever had? No, I've had them in the past, but like what? the at, the Lacroix I had, I tasted it for the rest of the day. Like it felt like I was drinking it for the rest of the day, and I already wasn't a huge fan of the flavor. Yeah. That's weird. I just got a Pod Tracker update. It says we're down to zero subscribers now. Oh god damn it! Well, I can't. I can't. You're gonna have to make a public apology. I can't. You don't though. like Lacroix. I, I don't. Everybody it, it, likes Lacroix. That's not true, because I don't. It can't, like literally after I had Lacroix, I don't know if it was Lacroix or something else. I was burping for the rest of the day. Oh, there's the Lacroix. <laughs> but like, no. Well, Brandon, 
you knew me. You've known me since high school. You yes. knew how much carbonation I've drink, I can drink in a day. Oh, yeah. You're I was a, a Dr. Pepper fiend. Oh, yeah. That's different. So I like Dr. Pepper because their carbonation is different, right? So it's tiny carbonation compared to, like, Coca-Cola that's big carbonation. Mm. I don't know how they do it, how they get the bubbly size different, but, uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Joyner's interest uh, has been in the 19th century phenomenon known as the Yahoo, also called the hairy man, Australian ape, or Australian gorilla, the shadowy creature that has uh, that seen as an undiscovered marsupial, but one that was presumably extinct in the early 20th century. There is some evidence for its former existence, um, said Joyner in his 1977 book, The Hairy Man of Southeastern Australia, which is a collection of documents about the Yahoo. It is based on research uh, that begun in 1970 and summarized uh, in a paper dated July 1973 called Notes of the Hairy Man, Wild Man, or Yahoo. Uh, the National Library of Australia, MS 3889. Reading out my so, citation. Yeah, yeah, so I want to point, like, I do want to point out, going back to the point that I made before, like this is a this is an uh like an actual paper yeah on the yahoo but it it doesn't mention the yowie in the title yeah yeah which i i kind of is a pretty i think that's a pretty big check mark in the side of it was unknown before 1975 oh yeah um yeah so at which time <clears throat> time it had been long forgotten and nothing had been heard of uh heard of the alleged yaoi he has since explained that the book was published to promote the former and to counter not endorse uh then new and extraordinary claims uh about the latter uh from grumpy times web archive so i know that read super weird but um basically some guy wrote a paper trying to to like disprove the yaoi and then people way misinterpreted it it Really? Yeah. Of course. Well, yeah. Because that's that's how <sighs> that's how these things go, though. Yeah. Like people people will see something and they'll be like, "This proves everything." It's like um, it's like with Bitcoin. Oh when yeah. When something bad happens, it's like this is good for Bitcoin. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So Tony Duff's claim to have met Yowies puts him in surprisingly good company. <laughs> Former. <laughs> Former Queensland Senator Bill Ochi was one of more than a dozen people, including fellow high school students and teachers, who claimed to have seen such a creature at a Springbrook campsite in 1977. It was Mr. Ochi, Senator, sorry, oh Senator Ochi, uh, said it was an immensely powerful creature, and he later told a documentary interviewer that basically we saw Yowie, uh, but we didn't know what they were at the time. We saw a short, a short ape-like thing that probably would have stood about eight feet tall. He said Mr. Dumpy was uh, camped in the bush northeast of Gimpy late one night when a very large male approached me. Uh, I got a fright and so did he, he said. He got a scare boner. Um, oh, that's also oh. how you can tell he's a male. The creature seemed well <laughs> human but larger and spoke in a language he thinks might be Latin. What? Okay, okay, one second. What? What? The yeah, we speak Latin, John. Claims, but Latin's a dead language. Claims Senator Ochi. But... What? He was quickly able to learn a few words in English, and we spoke for about two hours. What? The Kabong resident said. But what? Wait, okay. I had to pull my mic away from me because now I'm yelling. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so I started doing Duolingo recently because I wanted to refresh I myself. I started doing Duolingo to learn Esperanto and then gave up after about three weeks. Fair. Mainly because who uses Esperanto? Literally nobody. Yeah. Um, but now I want to learn American Sign Language. That's actually fair. Yeah. It's just uh, really hard to find source like resources online, and I don't want to go take a class. Yeah, yeah. American Sign Language is actually probably pretty useful yeah like um, i really 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 want to learn it spanish and american sign languages are pro probably the two most useful off the top of my head um but so i'm taking duolingo 
and I wouldn't be able to have enough English. I wouldn't have enough Spanish or Latin or anything to speak conversationally in two hours. Oh, yeah. No, well, that was, again, the Yowie was learning English, so it could be hyper into Actually, that's literally the next thing. He says they're very intelligent. Yeah, uh, but yeah. but if they were... Okay. Continue. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to... I'm going to basically tear this whole thing down. Okay. Uh, so he continues saying that they're very intelligent, but he says they're in danger. They build meager f- shelters in the forest, which are often destroyed by humans. He says the EPA won't respond to my calls. Fair. The, the next night, Mr. Dumpy's campsite uh, visitor returned, this time with his wife and daughter. My whole mission was to protect them and convince people to leave them alone and not hurt them. In at least 12 months, I've had close contact oh with the Yowies on at least seven occasions. These creatures must be protected and respected. Yowies are clearly the missing link that scientists have looked for for decades. I believe okay. they're the greatest discovery in the history of natural science. All right. They're, yeah? All right. Let me let me just put a, a huge PSA right here. Missing links don't exist. Yeah. That's not how evolution works. No. Continue. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother yeah. arguing it yeah. because there's no point in arguing it. It's yeah. just not how it works. Okay. They are very peaceful creatures and love their partners and children dearly. The Gimpy region's most recent documented Yowie sighting is from an anonymous Volvi uh, resident. He is described as a male, 40, who lived on a small rural block who reports being woken up at 2.30 a.m. on September 19th, 2012 by his dogs going ballistic. Letting his dogs out, he is confronted by a man-like figure, heavy set and smelling like rotten eggs. The creature reportedly so, ran away. The uh, Yeah? He's the one the Baja men were talking about. Yes. He let the dogs out. Oh, him. yes. It him, was him. Him, him, him. <laughs> he let the dogs out. I don't remember the rest of the song. Oh. Um. Uh, he said, less shy though, was a woman identified as Mrs. Roy Locke, who said she and her husband saw a four-foot hairy animal standing by the road near Kilkvan, 20 kilometers out of Murgon, just before dusk. It it had broad shoulders, uh, and it was looking at us when we drove past. So now Danny DeVito's in the mix. Danny DeVito is in the mix, or Henry Zabrowski, or their love child. Or the love child of Danny DeVito and Henry Zabrowski. Yeah. uh, Which... Truly, no more powerful being exists on the planet. No. Uh, he said, we didn't go back for another look, and we wouldn't have told anyone about it if other recent sightings weren't reported. I would have gone back for a look. I would have gotten out of the car. I've been like, I'm, I'm going to make one more loop around the block. I want to see that again. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know what? Uh, let me let me just do a three-point turn real quick. Yeah. I've done that before just in Kingston. Like, what did I to see? <laughs> like, what's happening here? What's going Although on? Although, to be fair, to be fair, some of the stuff you see on the roadside in Kingston is definitely worth a second look. Oh, yeah. Uh, she said then Counselor Mr. Roberts said footprints had been found in the past of the creature, and there were several corridors of bushland where a Yowie could survive. I'm a scientist, said the anonymous reporter of a Yowie sighting during a military <laughs> training operation 2003 at a tin can base camp park. <laughs> I'm a scientist! Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm a scientist. What are you a scientist of? Science. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally that's the end of it. That's just how I wanted to end it. Was just someone going, "I'm a scientist," said I... someone anonymous. <laughs> okay. So really quick, the thing I was gonna say, yeah, is, uh, and actually this is in the um. So they touch on this in the SCP-1000 that I read yeah. for the SCP podcast, which I'm still working on SCP podcast number two. I'm just lazy. Uh, so they talk about this. Um, if there's two intelligent species that exist in the same location that have similar yeah. needs, uh, there will be competition that occurs naturally yeah. due to like, you know, expansion yeah. of breeding and all that stuff. Uh because the yaoi and human beings would exist in the same point in the food chain, uh-huh. um, if they were more intelligent than us, they would overrun us. Oh, yeah. Like, two, or we would completely overrun them. But yeah. the idea of two intelligent species existing in the same place, but one of them is both 
physically more impressive and intel intellectually more impressive, yeah, that would be the end of us. The only reason why humanity is in the position it's in, despite being physically less impressive than like literally every animal in existence, yeah, is because um, we have more developed brains. I'm sorry, my cat's snoring and it's adorable. I was listening though. <laughs> uh, I I don't think I can follow up with a cat snore. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. I can't compete with a cat snore. Yeah, it's adorable though. That's that's cats. Uh huh. Until they bite you. That's cats true. A lot. I get bit a lot by cats. That that is also true. I mainly get bit by Jiro the most. So yeah. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Do you got anything else on this? No, I, that's it. I just wanted I've to end on piece. someone saying, "I, uh, you know, saying that they're a uh, scientist." I'm a scientist. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> I'm Sheldon. Uh huh. Uh. All right. So. As always, uh, if you like the podcast, we do have a website, cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we have an Instagram and Twitter, at cryptopediacast. Yeah. Uh, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Patreon as well, which is linked in the show notes. Um, and I just realized I didn't post this week's research. Uh, oh, wait, no, I did. Okay. Uh, if you're if you support us on the Patreon, you do get some perks. Like you get some uh, special episodes of just random stuff, uh, research notes, and access to a Discord channel and all that good stuff. Um, additionally, you occasionally get your name read out. And currently, we have two uh, Jacko level supporters, which are the people who get their name read out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And they are Clay Sinclair. That's my SNL voice. Like whenever I do Clay Sinclair, I feel like he needs the SNL announcer to say his voice. That's and, fair. Or say his name, and that's very Clay. And then Marty Von Party, which again, it's his birth name. Don't judge. Um, yeah. He's actually an introvert. He doesn't go out that much, Marty. He's uh, he is of the party, but the party is not for him. That Marty. Yeah, but there's no party without Marty. Can't have a party without Marty. You cannot have a party with without Marty. That's mostly because he slips a little bit of powder into all the drinks. That's true. Yeah, that's how Heffalumps got invented. You know, I'm not going to question that one. Yeah, don't. All right. Uh, we also have a Facebook group. Just search Cryptopedia Cast or whatever on Facebook. Yeah. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all uh -huh. that good stuff on your platform of choice. Although it definitely helps if you rate on iTunes. Although I don't know if it actually helps because I, I see conflicting reports on that, whether or not mm -hmm. that affects your, your placements. I think actual yeah. downloads are the most important thing. But which, which to that point, share it with your friends if you like the <laughs> podcast. Uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. We've got some stuff planned, uh, which is why we had a 14-minute logistical talk at the start of this episode before, without anyone hearing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you have anything that you want to see in particular, be sure to send it. Cause, and if you have sources for it, that's even greater. Oh, yeah. If anyone's ever like, yo, here's a really good source. Look at all of these things that are cited and how much text there is. <laughs> that would <Yes>. be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be phenomenal. We're gonna we're gonna definitely talk about sources on my next on the next episode of this podcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for the general stuff. Yep. Uh, if you would like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. That's b o y e r and the letter b dot com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast dot com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, for me, if you want to follow me on Instagram at Mew2057, uh, Twitter is JF Dunham, website is johndunhamgames.com, and you can email me at john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I'm thinking of doing a radio voice from now on.
<laughs> as always, I'm John. I, uh, my voice cracked as soon as I tried to do it. My I'm voice Brandon. Cracked too. <laughs> 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 and things are going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs>